The only thing that can be worse than having to deal with a narcissist is going to court with one. Whether it is a civil suit, for example a divorce case, or a criminal case in case they committed a terrible crime, the narcissist will do whatever they can to make themselves appear the victim and hurt by the mess. A narcissist in court is more toxic than dealing with one privately. They will go to extreme measures to make you the villain. We all know someone who has dealt with a narcissist in court or dealt with one ourselves. They are known to play dirty in court. Narcissists can seem like they will break in court, but they will always find a way to work around and cover up their lies with more lies. With the right moves and tactics, sometimes they are able to convince the judge and jury that they were the victim after all. This one is definitely a worthy listen. So sit back and listen to the different tactics used by narcissists in court. We know you are going to learn some interesting facts. Number one, bribing the jury. People have a general understanding of how narcissists work. They are self-absorbed, egotistical, manipulative, and sometimes aggressive. But how does a narcissist act in court? Well, usually narcissists have an idea that they are above the law. They usually believe that they can get away with things that others can't through persuasion and charm. Many narcissists in court will attempt to and sometimes succeed in bribing one or more jurors. We know what you're thinking. How do they even get away with that? With well-thought-out planning and time, they are able to find and meet up with jurors to convince them to be on their side. Narcissists sometimes will use other people to do their dirty work for them. They will make other people find the jurors outside of the courtroom and use bribery or fear to influence their decision. The narcissist will believe that the juror won't tell the court what they did while in reality, it can backfire on them. They usually scope out the weakest, most vulnerable-looking juror and prey on them. Most people will wonder why a juror will disagree with the rest of the others when the evidence is clearly against the narcissist. The victim will sometimes lose their case in instances like this. Number two, falsifying information. Have you ever confronted someone and had them turn around everything you said to make them look like the victim instead? Well, that is exactly how narcissists act in court. Narcissists can be hard to expose in court because of their ability to talk themselves out of sticky situations. When questioned about actions or behaviors, they can turn the situation around onto the victim. They will claim, I only acted this way because they made me. They also say things like, ask anyone who knows me, I would never do the things they are accusing me of. When a narcissist feels like they are being cornered and they are running out of excuses, they will start to lie. When a narcissist lies in court, it can be hard to decide who is telling the truth because of their ability to perform so well. A narcissist in court will also lie and exaggerate to create more dramatic situations. With their ability to lie and deceive others very well, they can also convince loved ones or friends to come in and back up these lies. They will tell friends or family that they need to say these things or the victim will win and bad things will happen to them. Number three, playing the abuse card. When the narcissist feels like the jurors are not convinced by their statements and testimony, they may turn things around by claiming that they are the ones abused. If they are questioned as to why they did not bring this up before, they will claim that they were afraid no one would believe them. They will claim verbal abuse to physical altercations. They will have all of these pictures of the incidents but no actual or medical evidence to back it up. They will start to act the part too. They will start to flinch when someone's hand goes near them or they will start to cry or even get angry. They will be questioned again why they didn't seek help or treatment and they will use lines like, I didn't want anyone to know the pain I was enduring or something along the lines of, I love them so much, I didn't want to hurt them. The roles become reversed and they are no longer in the spotlight as the villain. This happens to many victims and they end up turning into the bad person in court. Number four, triangulation. Triangulation is defined as the act of bringing a third party into a situation to deflect attention from the narcissist and focus it on someone else. A good example of this would be the Depp versus Heard trial of May 2022. Ms. Heard attempted triangulation by bringing up Kate Moss and the rumor of her being pushed down the stairs by Mr. Depp. She used that rumor as her reasoning for hitting Mr. Depp. She used Ms. Moss in hopes that she would be on her side and help her increase her chances of winning the case. That shows that narcissists will do anything to take the spotlight off of them and put it on to someone else. Triangulation can implicate anyone, a friend, family member, or an ex of the victim. They will call anyone who can help them win their case in court. Many times this technique, such as what Ms. Heard did, is used as an excuse to physically or mentally harm the victim. Number five, hiding assets. Many narcissists get off on having things that others can't have. Many narcissists will hide their own or marital assets. 
These items could include money, jewelry, art, and other highly valued items. They go to great lengths to hide them. They will loan money to friends, have multiple safety deposit boxes, or claim they lost the item ages ago when it is really hiding in the attic. When asked about any assets in court, most narcissists will simply claim they forgot about all of those items and forgot to provide documentation for these items. They are hoping that the court will dismiss the claim and that they can hold on to the valuables. Even if the valuables were obtained during the marriage by both spouses, the narcissist will believe they will be better off in their hands. If dealing with inherited assets after a death in the family, many narcissists will raid the home beforehand and take what they want and when questioned, will either pretend to forget to have done so or act like they didn't know they couldn't take whatever they wanted. Number six, trying to dominate the conversation. With narcissists, it's all about control. They want to feel like they have the upper hand in the situation and have everything go their way. They want to make people feel a certain way about them. They even want them to think certain thoughts. A narcissist in court will do everything they can to ensure dominance and control over the questioning. They will emphasize and focus repeatedly on certain questions and answers that favor them the most. If they are asked a bunch of questions around a topic that points them out to be the villain, they will answer with the same phrase over and over to show they are in control. They want to show the lawyers who are in charge that they cannot be broken down. They want to make sure they let the jurors hear what they want. They will make it a goal to get their story out there. They will assert dominance by keeping eye contact with jurors at all times, using a stiff tone when needed, and keeping their body language strong and tall. Number seven, continuous small petty lawsuits. Narcissists are known to be an inconvenience. Being on the bad side of a narcissistic person can cause extreme stress for the victim. Narcissists will find other small petty lawsuits to file against the victim to cause a bigger amount of stress for them. The goal is to create mayhem and stress to the extreme points of hostility and get the victim to lash out. Once they lash out, they will document or film it to show proof in court that they are indeed the victims and not the villain. They want the victim to be the bad guy and to come off looking helpless and scared. This is a technique a narcissist will use if they feel like they could lose the suit against them. Number eight, an extreme amount of motions. The last main point is important. It is something that most people do not think of to be a narcissistic tactic in court, but it is. A narcissist will file an extreme amount of motions to drag the case out and cause the victim even more stress. This is another technique used when the narcissist feels or even knows they have a losing case. It can help them gather more evidence they need to help them win. This is also a financial drain for the victim. When they have to continuously provide legal support to keep up with the narcissist, it will drain their financial means and hurt them more than they have already been hurt. The narcissist is usually aware of the victim's financial means and will do anything in their power to create more harm if they feel cornered. The narcissist knows that the victim will keep doing whatever they have to do to win. So this is the narcissist's way of playing games in court. And if you liked this video, then check out these related videos to see more. And make sure to like this video to let the algorithm know you'd like to see more videos like these.